Welcome to another tutorial video. We're going to cover the cash flow sweep, also known as optional repayments or optional debt repayments, or just the cash sweep in LBO models in this tutorial. This is definitely something you're going to have to know for private equity interviews, LBO modeling tests, and private equity case studies in general. Once again, I will post the link here for all the files and resources, including a few simplified Excel files and a written version of this tutorial. It's a long URL, so I will pin this below the video and you can just click on it and access the files there. This is a summary or excerpt from our full private equity modeling course, which goes into these concepts in a lot more detail. So I'm gonna give you the three minute version to start out with, and then we'll delve into each part of this in a little bit more detail. The cash flow sweep refers to a company's ability to repay debt optionally based on its cash flows in the period, in addition to the mandatory or scheduled repayments that almost always come with debt. Now, the most common way to see this is that it is usually a term attached to senior debt that is used in leverage buyouts and credit models, such as the term loans that are issued by banks. You tend not to see the cash flow sweep on junior debt, such as subordinated notes and mezzanine, although there can be some exceptions here. In terms of risk and returns, these optional debt repayments tend to boost the private equity firm's IRR, but the cash flow sweep actually does not affect the lender's IRR. It does create some reinvestment risk for, for them and it can affect the money on money multiple, but it doesn't actually change the IRR. Now, in a very simple LBO model, you see a lot of cases where the debt schedule has a 100% cash flow sweep that is implicitly built into the schedule. So the idea is that if the beginning cash plus the free cash flow minus the minimum cash is positive, you can use all of it to repay the debt. And then if it's negative, you can borrow more. I'm gonna pull up a very simple model on screen so I can show you what I'm referring to here. So this is a variant of the simple LBO model that we've shared before. And if you go down to the cash flow and debt repayment schedule here, and you look at the cash flow used for debt repayment line, we're taking the minimum between the debt balance and then the cash flow available for debt repayment right here. So what this means is that if this cash flow available is some positive number, we use it to repay the debt balance. If it is a negative number, we borrow more because we have to borrow more and we add that to the debt balance. This is effectively a 100% cash flow sweep because we're saying if we have 19 of cash flow, let's use all 19, all 100% of 19 to repay debt. If we have 67 of cash flow available, let's use all 67 to repay the debt balance, which falls by 67 in this period. Now, in more complex models, the sweep will often be limited to specific percentages of cash flow. So it might be 50% or 25% or something like that. It might also vary for different debt tranches in the model. Cash flow sweeps can come up in project finance as well, but the thing to remember here is that they should not affect the debt sizing and sculpting, which are set in advance based on the expected or forecast cash flows from the asset because for most project finance assets, these cash flows tend to be a lot more predictable than they are for normal companies. So that's the very short version. Now let's go into this in a little bit more detail. I'll start by going through the sweep percentages and returns and how different percentages here affect things in a simple model. Then we'll look at a cash flow sweep with multiple debt tranches. Then I'll show you a few examples of more complex debt sweeps and optional repayment schedules in LBO models. And then we'll talk a little bit about the project finance angle and what you might expect to see for cash flow sweeps there. Let's go into the first topic, the sweep percentages and how they affect the returns to both lenders and the private equity firm. So the basic idea here is that if you want to add a sweep to a very simple LBO model, you first check to see if the cash flow available for debt repayment is positive. If it is positive, you repay the lesser of the remaining debt balance and then the cash flow available times the sweep percentage. Now, if it's not positive, so if it's negative, then you just link to the cash flow available because in that case, you simply need to borrow extra. Let's go into Excel and see how this works. I'm gonna pull up the very simple model again. I'm gonna show you how to modify this on screen to support this. First, I will go up to the top and where we have the cash flow sweep right here, I'm gonna change this to 50%. This is in cell F17 in the Excel model. And then let's go down and actually implement this in the cash flow used for debt repayment line. So right now it's using a very simple min function. I'm going to modify this and I'm going to say that if our cash flow available is positive, then we will take the minimum between the remaining debt balance, so the debt balance at the end of the previous period, and then compare it to the cash flow available times the sweep percentage of 50% that we just set up there. Meanwhile, if this cash flow available is negative, I will just link to it as is because in this case it means that we need to actually borrow extra. We need to increase our debt balance to meet our minimum cash for this period. We have that and let's copy it across. And now you can clearly see how it works where 
We have 40 of cash flow available, but we only use 20 to repay the debt. And this is what a 50% cash flow sweep looks like. You might be wondering about how this affects the returns, and you might intuitively think that it is going to change things for the lender because it changes how quickly they get repaid for their debt principal. But counterintuitively, the lender's IRR actually does not change. Their money on money multiple changes because the total interest over the holding period is lower with a cash flow sweep, but the IRR itself does not change. Let's go in and look at an example. Now to save some time, I've already entered the returns to lenders down here at the bottom. We have the upfront investment, the 500 million of debt that they put in. We have the interest that they earn in each period, the principal repayments from the cash flow sweep in this case. There are no mandatory repayments, so this is all just the cash flow sweep. And then we have the full loan repayment at the end. To simplify things, I have assumed that we always exit in year five here, just because I don't want to get into more complex formulas at this stage. So with this 50% cash flow sweep, we get to a 1.37x multiple and an 8% IRR. Now, if I go up and change this to a 100% cash flow sweep, let's just enter that and go down. The money on money multiple shifts slightly to 1.35x, but the IRR is still 8%. And similarly, if I go up and change this to a 0% cash flow sweep, let's go down and take a look at this. The money on money multiple shifts, but the IRR is still 8%. And the reason why this happens intuitively is that the cash flow sweep affects the basis. And so, yes, the interest income that the lenders earn goes down, but their invested amount, their invested capital also goes down as that's happening. So the annualized return here does not really change. Now, this could differ in a more complex model, but you don't really see huge changes for the most part. With the private equity firm, meanwhile, you can actually see changes here. And to illustrate, let's say I change this to a 100% cash flow sweep. Under this scenario, the IRR in a year five exit does go up by about 0.5%. So it's not hugely significant, but it does make a small difference here. And if we had more significant debt repayment over this period, if this went down from 500 to closer to zero or 100 or something like that, you would probably see an even bigger difference with the IRR right here. For now, I'm going to change this back to 50% and I'll leave it like that for your reference in this file. Now, the next topic I want to go into is what happens when you have a cash flow sweep with multiple debt tranches. Usually in this case, you have a revolver and then you have something like a term loan A and a term loan B. The revolver is for short-term borrowing needs and this revolver balance is always repaid first. So there's effectively a 100% cash flow sweep on just the revolver before anything else here is repaid optionally. Then if you have a term loan A and a term loan B, the A tranche tends to have lower interest and then higher mandatory and optional repayments. The sweep formulas must factor in the amounts already repaid in the more senior tranches. So when you're calculating the cash flow sweep for term loan A, you have to think about the revolver. And when you're calculating the cash flow sweep for term loan B, you have to think about the revolver and the term loan A. Let's go into Excel, and I'm going to go to the next tab over here, the TLA underscore B underscore sweep tab, and show you how this works. We have a revolver, term loan A, term loan B. The interest rates get more expensive as you go down the capital structure like this. The repayments and the cash flow sweep here also change. It's a 50% sweep for term loan A, but then for term loan B, it is a 25% sweep. So let's go down and see how this works. I'm going down to the debt schedule right here. For the revolver, this is intended to meet the company's short-term borrowing needs. And the formula for this one is very simple. We just take the negative minimum between the beginning revolver balance in this period, and then the cash flow surplus or deficit. This is really the same, the same thing as the cash flow available for optional repayment, but we're calling it something slightly different here. It's the same exact idea though. Beginning cash plus free cash flow minus the mandatory amortization or repayments minus the minimum cash. I'll copy this over and you can see how this works. We draw on the revolver, but then we repay the revolver very quickly over the next two years. Now, when you go down to term loan A, the mandatory repayments are just based on the beginning amount times a fixed repayment. We compare that to the remaining balance at this point to make sure we never overpay on this. So this is pretty straightforward. For the cash flow sweep, we need to factor in the cash flow available and the remaining debt balance. So let's take the negative minimum between the remaining debt balance at this point in time after the mandatory repayments, and then Let's go up and get the cash flow surplus or deficit, and then let's factor in the revolver draws and repayments. This represents our cash flow available for the sweep of the term loan A, and then let's go up and multiply by the sweep percentage of 50%. So we're gonna use 50% of our available cash flow to repay term loan A optionally. 
And you can see how when there's a revolver draw, we obviously don't repay anything. When there is revolver repayment using all the cash flow that we have, we also do not repay anything. But then after that, in year three, this starts to shift because we fully repay the revolver and now we have some cash flow available around 3.5 million that we can put toward this optional repayment of term loan A. Now for term loan B, you have to be careful because yes, it's a similar idea in that we want to take the minimum between our remaining balance at this point in time and then our cash flow available times the sweep percentage. But the difference is that now our cash flow available is the cash flow surplus or deficit, the revolver draws and repayments, and we have to factor in the cash flow sweep on term loan A because this reduces how much is available to repay term loan B. Term loan A is senior to term loan B, so these optional repayments always reduce the cash flow that we have for the term loan B cash flow sweep. And then let's multiply this by the 25% sweep right up there. We have that, and then let's copy this across, and you can see how it works. It's the same idea where we start getting non-zero numbers here in year three because that is the first period in which optional repayments of both term loan A and term loan B can take place. Even with this more complex setup, it doesn't really change anything. The IRR to the term loan A lenders is still about 6.1%. And even if we change the sweep percentage and make it 100%, let's say, it's still 6.1%. The money on money multiple shifts slightly, but the IRR does not because these types of cash flow sweeps simply affect the basis that the lenders have. And so, yes, they earn less in interest, but they also have less invested in the company and the deal. Now, the next point here is more complex sweeps and LBO models. And I'm not going to go into the formulas here because it takes too much time to explain in this short video. But once you go above about two to three tranches of debt, it becomes very cumbersome to make these types of calculations that factor in all the previous repayments. And so you normally wanna group the tranches together for mandatory repayments and optional repayments, and then set up more flexible formulas that we can be copied and pasted around to deal with this. If you have terms like prepayment penalties or original issue discount, or maybe the ability to repay all of an entire tranche, but only if the company can repay everything at once in a single year, those can also complicate these schedules. But to show you a simple example, if we pull up our advanced LBO model in our private equity modeling course, in this case, we have about seven tranches of debt. And once you go up to this level, it's not really feasible to create the same type of debt schedule. So we group together all the mandatory repayments here and have a single formula that we can copy and paste around for the most part to deal with this. And then for the optional repayments, we have the sweep percentages right here. And then if you look at the formulas, it is more complex, but essentially all we're doing is setting it up such that it factors in all the previous repayments above this to determine how much cash flow is available for, for example, the term loan B optional repayment or the term loan B cash flow sweep right here. So in models like this, it can get more complicated. Other terms also make this more complex, but I just wanted to present the basic idea here. Now let's talk about the project finance angle. So as you know, if you looked at our other project finance tutorials, debt is normally sized and sculpted to match an asset's future cash flows because in this sector for infrastructure, for energy, for some transportation assets, the cash flows tend to be a lot more predictable than they are for normal companies. The cash flow sweep could still exist in project finance models, but the key point is that it should not affect the debt sizing and sculpting here. All this really means is that you size and sculpt the debt based on a targeted debt service coverage ratio or loan life coverage ratio. And if there is a sweep, the debt is simply repaid before its official maturity date because there are bonus payments or payments for the company's cash flow exceeding the targets, for example, and that leads to this faster repayment. So I'm gonna pull up an example here of a very simple project finance model with a sweep included. It's a 50% cash flow sweep here. And then the debt is sized and sculpted based on a 1.5X loan life coverage ratio. Normally we would expect this debt to mature in 10 years, but if you look at what actually happens right here, because of the cash flow sweep, it doesn't actually take until year 10 to fully repay the debt. Instead, the debt is fully repaid in year eight. And if you look at the contributions here, the cash flow sweep adds a significant amount to the scheduled debt service. Now there are some ways to get around this and to still make the debt mature in year 10 if you really want to do that, but it gets rather complicated to modify the sculpting and sizing formula, so I'm not going to go into it here, but some people do try to adjust for this type of thing. That's about it, so let's do a quick recap and summary. With sweep percentages and returns, this is fairly simple. This is what we looked at in the basic model here, where 
essentially all we have to do is just do a check of the cash flow available. And then if it's positive, we compare the remaining debt balance to the cash flow available times the sweep percentage. If this number is negative, then we just assume additional borrowing. When there's a cash flow sweep with multiple tranches, the main thing to be careful of is that, first off, the revolver has to handle any type of temporary borrowing needs the company has. And then with the cash flow sweeps, yes, you look at the remaining debt balance and the cash flow available, but that cash flow available has to include everything above the level that you're at, and you have to multiply by the sweep percentage as we did here. So with term loan B, for example, you have to include the optional repayments of both the revolver and the term loan A to set this up properly. More complex sweeps, you will see schedules that line up everything as I showed you in the advanced LBO model, and you'll create some type of flexible formula that you can copy around. Terms like prepayment penalties can also complicate this. And then in project finance, you can have cash flow sweeps, but they shouldn't affect the debt sizing and sculpting. And if you do want to build that in and allow for the proper maturity date based on cash flow sweeps, it's possible, but it takes some more time and effort and you have to change around how all the formulas work. That's about it for this lesson. Hopefully now you have a better idea of how to include this in LBO models and how to approach it if you get this in an LBO modeling test or case study.